Ephesians chapter number one. And if you hold up your Bibles right there where you are, this is my Bible. This is God's word to me. And I believe what it says. Who it says I am, that's who I am. And it says that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is my Bible. God's word to me. Supernatural, immutable, unchangeable word to me. And who it says I am and what it says I can do. It's true. <laughs> it says I can do all things. It says I'm his righteousness and I believe what it says. And where I have need of change, I'm ready to be changed by the immutable, unchangeable, hallelujah, word of God. Mm. And I'll never be the same again after I have heard, after I've believed it in my heart. As I received it, and as I apply it, I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Ephesians chapter number one is where we're going to kind of plan our, our time together. And it is just one of my very, very favorite scriptures. I pray this uh, over myself now probably the last 30 years. So I'm very familiar with this text, and I love it when it comes up in the lectionary so that I can reiterate its value, particularly as it comes up to Thanksgiving season. Ephesians chapter number one, and I'm going to start at verse two. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us mm, with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Can you just pause there and thank him? Just say thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Just say thank you. thank you. This is going to be an exhortation on Thanksgiving week, an exhortation, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Verse four, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, there it is, and without blame before him in love. I want you to underline that because we are, have been in a series, Holy Spirit, Holy Life, and pastor took us to holy living, holy living and we got an A and we trying to keep our A praise God we don't want by the second card marking we still want an A that was the first card marking praise God but when it comes to the second card marking we still want our A and the Lord spoke something to me this morning that's probably not going to like but I'm going to say it anyhow and, and the Lord kind of spoke to me and said most of what is wrong with us Holiness will fix it. Amen. Most of what is wrong with us, whether it's mentally, emotionally, whatever it is, financially, even in relationships, even in our own kind of, you know, whatever it is that's irritating us or aggravating us, whatever it is in our job space, in our career space, whatever it is that keeps us awake at night, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me this morning and said, for everything that ails us, holiness will fix it. Because usually what is ailing us is an area where we have not submitted it to holiness. If you submit your finances to holiness, you won't have any trouble with your money. If you submit your mind to holiness, if you submit your will to holiness, Holiness will fix some of the mental struggles. And God just spoke that to me. And listen to what the text says. It said he chose us, verse 4, before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, if he chose us to be holy and we choose not to be holy, we're going to struggle. That's where the struggle, that's where the contradiction is. That's where the conflict is. If I chose you for holiness and you choose not to be holy, there's going to be a problem. 
Because we've been chosen for holiness. We've been chosen to live blameless before him. And so every area of our life where we struggle with holiness, which is our indigenous calling by God, that once we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that we should be holy and without blame, then we need to get, we need to get busy, don't we? Now, let's read this. Having been what? Predestined to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, look at this, according to the good pleasure of his will. If I'm living according to his good pleasure, my life is going to be beautiful. Verse 6, to the praise of his glory, the glory of his grace by which he made us what? Accepted in the beloved. So you don't need to struggle with self-esteem or self-worth. You don't need to struggle with being validated or being accepted. You've been accepted in the beloved. Verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. I want to read that again. Look at this. Not only have we been accepted in the beloved. Not only have we received adoption as sons. Not only do we see our purpose to live holy and blameless, but now we have what? Redemption through the blood. Forgiveness of sins. Wow. According to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known to us, look at this, the mystery of his will and of his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. And in him you have trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, having believed, you were sealed, I love this part, with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the guarantor of our inheritance, my God until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, Paul says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance found in the saints. My God. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according or in accordance to the same working of his own mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers mights and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things in the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and all. Amen for the reading and the doing and the hearing of his word. I want us to just focus, you may be seated in the presence, on just five things that we are going to raise up out of the text. I read the entirety of the 
of the text because I wanted you to understand why we are giving thanks and all the things that God has established for us through Christ Jesus and has sealed by Holy Spirit. I want you to look at this and we're going to pray through these things and that way I don't have to do all the talking. We can just kind of pray through it together as we lift these up. I want you to run down, if you will, to verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, let's just take a minute and think about that and let us begin to open our mouths in prayer as we raise that up. This first prayer is for the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Christ. Father, we thank you this morning for the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks for the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Pastor Shannon to come and lead us in that prayer this morning that we would receive the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation. Say that everybody out of your mouth. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Christ. That's what you want to see in your life. You want to see the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Christ. Let's just take about three minutes and as she leads us, let's just pray through that. Amen. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, fully in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we want you to get the glory of our lives. We want the fruit of our lips to bring you glory. We don't want in our private moments, oh God, to be doing and saying things that do not reflect you, oh God. So give us the spirit of wisdom, oh God, and revelation to look again in our lives so that it will always be reflective of you. The spirit of 
wisdom and the spirit of revelation. Help us to hear it, O oh God. Help us to see it, O oh God. Help us to speak it, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Spirit of wisdom, hover over our mind. Spirit of revelation, hover over our spirit. Spirit of wisdom and revelation, rest inside of us. And when we crack open our Bibles, O oh God, let us be open to see with new eyes of wisdom and revelation so that we can apply it in our lives, oh God. We want our lives to reflect a life of wisdom, a life that reflects a life that has been um, revealed the things of God. Lord, we want to walk out this Ephesians passage in our daily lives, moment by moment, day by day, oh God, to be reflective of you. Spirit of revelation and spirit of wisdom, we are asking afresh that you would rest on us anew, rest in our minds, come out of our spirit, come out of our mouths, God, that in everything that we do and everything that we say, that people will be able to see that it is working anew in us, oh God, that it is working its way through our bodies, working its way through our spirit, working its way through our life in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will have its perfect work in us, oh God, that our lives will bring you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you that this work will be completed and that it will bring you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Wow. Everybody said with me the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Christ. How many of you know if that comes upon you, you will never be the same again? Hallelujah. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Don't take that lightly. That's going to hit your life. Amen. And then he says now, he says, the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. The eyes of your spirit would be enlightened. I want us to begin to pray for that. Let's just open our mouths and say, Lord, I want the eyes of my understanding enlightened. Oh, yes, oh God. I want the eyes of my understanding to be enlightened. Mm, hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Begin to open your mouth and just begin to pray that in the name of Jesus. I want the eyes of my understanding to be enlightened. Paul said, ever since I heard of your faith, I pray for you this every day. That the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. Oh, Rabbi Sheketab Amahaya. God, we give you praise right now. Hallelujah. For the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. I want you to say that out of your mouth. That the eyes of my understanding. How many of you know that misunderstandings are the culprit for most uh, debates in your life the things we misunderstand we had Comcast to come in yesterday and I, I don't know uh, some things had happened and you know we had to correct some things here and the technician I thank God for him he was a beautiful young man and uh, I was on one page and he was on another page so I took him to the wrong area where the modems are because we have so many modems here I took him to the wrong modem and when he came back and he looked at it he said well you have some other things on your thing I said well that's not what I'm looking at I'm looking at the you know the receipt and the bill and the invoice he said I don't think that's right and, and so for about 45 minutes we were just on two different pages and then Comcast was on the phone and they was on the third page and so finally, I just started praying in the Holy Ghost. I said, what is wrong here? And he was so kind because, you know, I was trying to get everything right. So I, I was getting on his nerves, and he was too kind. He was getting on my nerves just being kind. I wanted him to get it right. And I said, Holy Spirit, open the eyes of my understanding. And in that moment, I went to another area where another modem was. And I said, is this the modem? He said, oh my God, this is the modem. We had taken the wrong modem out and put a new modem in a, in a place that didn't need a new modem. And the old place that needed a new modem was not taken care of. But in a moment, I prayed. 
the eyes of my understanding to be enlightened. And in that moment, revelation came. So it's not just about spiritual stuff. It can be natural stuff. Because that could have caused a huge misunderstanding. And we would not even be able to be live this morning. But God, by the Spirit, opened the eyes of my understanding. So I'm praying over each of you that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. Oh, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Woo, glory, glory, glory. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say time and timing. Mm. There are some things that the Lord is going to put his finger on in our lives that are not wrong, but the timing is off. Holy Spirit said the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened not just to know what to do, but to know when to do it. Father, we thank you for that revelation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Time and timing. Hallelujah. How many of you have ever done the right thing, but it was the wrong time? Come on now. If you had waited five years, if you had waited three years, if you had waited 10 years, come on now. You look back over that, that thing, that space, that time, that decision. You realize that time wasn't ready for that. How many of you have some things in your life you wish you could untime? It wasn't undo, it's untime it. If I could have fast forwarded it. If I could have put it in another season of my life. Y'all not saying nothing to me. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Then God opened the eyes of our understanding. Open the eyes of our understanding that we're not caught doing the right thing at the wrong time. Somebody write this down, understanding the season. Understanding the season. You can be in the summer and have on a winter coat. Come on, somebody. Woo, I see that in the name of Jesus. You can be standing in 90 degree weather. Now, there's nothing wrong with the weather. And there's nothing wrong with the coat. It's just not the right time. Woo, hallelujah. Beautiful $30,000 mink coat. Beautiful, but it's 90 degrees. And you're standing outside in a $30,000 mink in 90 degree weather. It's nothing wrong with the coat. It's nothing wrong with the weather. But they don't match. The timing is off. I was talking to my daughter last night about a situation. And I said it was a, it was a mistake of timing. Hondo Shikabaya. Lord, order our steps to be in time. Hallelujah. And forgive us for all the, the, the mismatches of time that we might have not discerned properly. Help us to understand our seasons. Oh, in the name of Jesus. The third thing, the third thing is that you would know the hope of your callings. Oh, so many people are struggling with that right there the hope of your calling, that you would know the hope of your callings. And I found out that we're not talking about ministry per se, but even your vocational callings, that you would know the hope of your calling. Why were you born? Here's a question that we all need the, the answer to. What problem was I born to solve? What problem was I born to solve? What problem was I born to solve? When I can answer that question, then I understand my calling. What problem was I born to solve? And when you can get the understanding of that answer, that answer may take you to ministry, that answer may take you to government. That answer may take you to education. Or it may take you to all of the above. But you've got to answer that question. Lord, what problem was I born to solve? And there are people that are on jobs that they hate because it's not the hope of their callings. Oh, hallelujah. 
There are many people that are in ministry, but they hate it. Y'all not going to like me today because it's not the hope of their calling. Maybe they saw somebody and somebody tried to put ministry on them or maybe they grew up in a ministry family. But, you know, it, it doesn't mean that because you grew up in a ministry family that your calling is church. Your calling could be teaching. Your calling could be government. Your calling could be media. But most people do not know, not from God, what is the hope of my calling. That word hope is expectation. God has an expectation of us. God has an expectation of you. God has an expectation of me. What is the expectation of my calling? What is the hope of my calling? What problem was I born to solve? Let's pray about that. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now, oh God, in this week of Thanksgiving that we are asking, amen, the eyes of understanding be enlightened the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. And now, God, we are asking that we would all know in this season the hope of our calling. Give us the gift of accuracy. My God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Say, give me the gift of accuracy. Come Say it again. Give me the gift of accuracy. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me the gift of accuracy. Paul says, I heard of your faith and I heard that you are serving this God and that you have made Jesus your Lord, but I want you to walk in accuracy. I want you to walk in the, in the right calling. I don't want you to be helter and skelter and hit or miss. That you walk in accuracy. How many of you know that there are people all around us that hate their lives? They don't want to give thanks. They don't, they, all, everything that's around them is a trigger for their unhappiness. But when you are in the hope of your calling, my children had a fit when I came out with COVID and I was here preaching to a skeletal crew. And uh, my daughter, my youngest daughter, April, she was like, Ma, please. And she had called about 15 people. And she had 15 or 20 people to call me to tell me to stay home. And uh, I understood her concern. I understood her fear as a, as a child. She's my child. And she was concerned. I guess I must have been looking pretty sick. And she said, uh, Ma, you need to just stay home. And at one point I could tell she was really frustrated because I kept saying I can't stay home. And she said, I said, if you want me to be all right, let me fulfill my calling. If you, if you take my calling from me, if you take that away from me, I'll die. And I understand your concern, but I know the hope of my calling. And if I don't do it, it'll kill me. Y'all not saying nothing. See, when you, when you know the hope of your calling, and I promise you, I said, I promise you, I'll go and come right back home. And I promise you that nobody will get it from me. Because I'm in the hope of my calling. How many of you want, how many of you ever heard in the pocket? Y'all ever heard that term in the pocket? You're playing a little pool. You want that ball to do what? In the pocket. I'm going to put that one right there. In the pocket. That means that that ball dropped into that pocket where it's fit to go. I'm in my pocket. And God wants all of us to be in the pocket. What is the hope of your calling? Let's pray. Come on, Father, we thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, for the hope of our calling. Hallelujah, the accuracy of our calling. That we walk in the, in the precision of our time and timing. That we walk in the accuracy, the gift of accuracy, according to the problem that we have been born to solve. God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. Hallelujah, that you didn't just mass produce us. Mm, but you produced us individually. You produced us to know God, you and you to know us individually. That we can know you personally. That you can trace our steps in the earth. That my feet don't look like nobody else's feet. My fingers don't look like anybody else's fingers. You made me unique. You made me after your likeness. You made me in your image. 
Now, God, I want to know the hope of my calling. And I thank you for that. Hallelujah. I give you praise that I'll walk in the pocket. I'll, I'll live in the pocket. I'll produce in the pocket. That my life, I make an impact because I'm in the pocket. I'm in the very space that you created me to be. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Oh, come on, somebody. I love that. Amen. He said, now that you would know the riches of his inheritance for you, that you would know the riches of his, of the glory of his inheritance that's in the saints. That's in verse 18. That you would know the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Hallelujah. That you would know the riches. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thank you for heaven, but heaven ain't my goal. There's so much more. There's so much more to living a saved life. There's so much more to knowing Christ. There's so much more to being filled with his Holy Spirit. There's so much more that you would know the glory of the riches. My God, let's pray for that right now. Father, we thank you for the glory of the riches and knowing the inheritance that has been set aside for the saints. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we give you praise. I saw Pastor Val come in. I'm going to ask her to get ready and come pray this prayer. Hallelujah. That there's a, there is a unique richness and an inheritance for each of the saints. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. You say, why should I give thanks? My God, because I'm a saint. I give thanks because there's an inheritance for me. Glory to God. My parents didn't leave me money. My parents left me an inheritance, an inheritance in the gospel. How rich is this? How rich is this? They didn't leave me a, 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 a $2 million policy. They didn't leave me a dollar policy. But they left me an inheritance among those that are sanctified. Woo, hallelujah. When I pull up to the building sometime, I just sit in front of it. And I think about, wow, the other day I drove down uh, Oakland Avenue and pulled on Alger Street. And I just sat in front of the empty yard and envisioned that little building, 935 Alger, that blessed the whole world. The people heard about a Go Tell It ministry, spread the word. At 935 Alger, they would get on planes and come to Detroit and look for Alger and come there and say, now this can't be it. It wasn't the building, it's the inheritance. Hallelujah. And God, through Jesus Christ, has given each of us a what? Inheritance. An inheritance. And it's, it's the richness. The riches of his glory and the inheritance in the saints. Come on, come on. I want you to grab a hold of that. That's powerful. Come on, Pastor Val, and pray this for us this morning. Father, we do bless you, and we give your name the glory. We thank you for the inheritance of the saints. And we thank you that the inheritance is among the saints. Glory. Those who are set apart, those who are called out, those who have been brought out of darkness into the into the marvelous light. We thank you. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. We thank you even now that your intention is that through the wisdom of God, the church, the saints, that the manifold wisdom of God might be made manifest. We thank you for this inheritance. We thank you for the inheritance of healing. We thank you that healing is the children's bread. We thank you even now, oh God, for the, uh, being the sanctified ones, God, who you said we will have no want we would have no need we thank you oh God even now we thank you even now the inheritance of the saints a place a pavilion a place of safety a place where your word says the righteous can run to it and they are saved and they are safe we thank you for that inheritance we thank you that it's not of our own it is not our own it is not our own doing but it is by your grace it is by your grace. It is by your favor. And we thank you even now, God. We thank you that that inheritance entitles us 
to light and darkness, glory to God. That inheritance entitles us, oh God, to water when things are dry. That inheritance provides for us a power that cannot be comprehended by the world. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for the inheritance, my God, oh, that causes us to be sought in the earth. That when things are ugly, when things are not clean, God, we thank you that the inheritance causes us to walk in and your purity shows up. My God, we thank you for the inheritance even now. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor that that inheritance says that healing belongs to us, that the power of the Holy Ghost is not just for us, but it is the inheritance of our children, our children's children, and to those who are yet unborn. My God, we thank you. We thank you that that inheritance, God, is a citizenship in a kingdom that will not make us ashamed. We thank you that when there is trouble, we thank you that when there is patience, God, the lack of patience, that the situation the inheritance that we have gives us a hope that doesn't make us ashamed. My God, we thank you even now. We're not ashamed of this gospel. We thank you that that inheritance causes us to live, to move, and have our being in you. Oh, sovereign one, we thank you. We thank you, sovereign one. We thank you that you are already where we're going. The inheritance tells us that everything is already all right. Oh, God, we thank you for the inheritance. We thank you for the inheritance. When we didn't know what to do, when we even make our bed in hell, the inheritance says you'll find us there. My God, we thank you. We thank you that the inheritance, oh God, draws us back to you when we find ourselves drifting away. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. We thank you for the divine inheritance, God. I hear you saying, oh, that gives us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Oh, God. And so we add to our hope. We add to our patience. We add to our brotherly love. We add to our endurance. And you said that that inheritance, God, Oh, bless your name. You said that that inheritance would keep us from being unaffected and unproductive. You said we won't be short-sighted, we won't be blind, but the hope of the inheritance of the saints causes us to not be ashamed. Even now we thank you. We thank you, oh God, that for generations past and for generations to come, your name shall be glorified in the inheritance of the saints. For the church, for the marketplace, that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that that inheritance causes us and allows us to sit with you in heavenly places and decree and declare and decree and declare. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you that the entrance of your word, there's light. We thank you that because we belong to you, we thank you that you no longer call us servants, but you call us friends. We inherited a friendship with you. We inherited a language with you where we can talk to you and we can speak to you and you can reveal to us those things. We are not like the world. We're not like the world. We thank you that that inheritance causes us to know these things by the Spirit of God. Thank you. Anashiko. Thank you for the inheritance. Thank you for the inheritance. Thank you for sonship. Thank you for adoption. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. We give you praise. We give you and we honor you for it in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come on, somebody, and give him praise. Five things to give him thanks for, folks. The first one was what? The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation and the knowledge of him. The second, thing that, the second thing that we're giving thanks for is the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. The third thing that we're giving thanks for is what? The hope of our calling. My God, in the name of Jesus. The fourth thing is that we have given him now thanks for the riches of his inheritance among the saints. How many of you got that? I, we already got four things to give him thanks for. 
The first thing is what? The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation and the knowledge of him. The second thing that we're giving him thanks for is the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. The third thing that we're giving him thanks for is what? The hope of our callings. Woo, glory to God. The fourth thing that we're now just giving him thanks for is what? The riches of his inheritance that is given to the saints. Number five, the fifth thing that we will give him thanks for. Number, verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Oh, hallelujah. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe and that it is in accordance to the working of his mighty power that raised Jesus from the dead. I'm going to give you one guess what that is. That is my friend. That's my best friend. That is my best friend. I'm going to give you one guess. What is my friend's name? Holy Spirit. That you would know the immeasurable greatness of his power. Woo, hallelujah. Five things that we're giving thanks for today. Five things that we're giving thanks for this week. And the last one is that we would know the immeasurable greatness of his power. One text says that we would know the immeasurable greatness of his great power. He put greatness in there twice. And that it is the same power, verse 20, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And that power was the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul says in Romans chapter number 8 that it, if the same spirit, if he be in you, that raised Jesus from the dead, that he will quicken you in your mortal body. Hallelujah. How many of you give thanks for the great power of Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. I don't hear you. I don't hear you at your house. I need to hear you at your house. Five things that we're giving him thanks for. Five things. And the last one I think is my favorite. That we would know the immeasurable, immeasurable. You know what that means? The immeasurable greatness. Woo, hallelujah. That is not even measurable. Hey, glory to God. I just want to say this to somebody. I know that the world is upside down. I recognize that politics protests and a pandemic has you in a place but I want you to begin to give thanks for the immeasurable greatness of his great mighty power that you would give thanks that in the midst of a pandemic in the midst of a political uprising in the midst of protests, in the midst of what could be a civil war, that you have access to the immeasurable greatness of his mighty power. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken you in your mortal body. Ooh, stand on your feet all over this room and all over your house. Five things that we give thanks for. Hallelujah. And I want you to clap your hands and open your mouth and give him praise for the five things that you now can give thanks for. You say, well, I can't give thanks. Oh, yes. I just gave you five things. I realize that there are some circumstances that you may not right now be enjoying. I know businesses are closed. Schools are closed. People are losing their jobs. I recognize that. But I want to give you five things that you can give thanks for. Focus your mind. Yeah, focus on these things. Paul said, think on these things. Things that are righteous, things that are honest, things that are pure, things that are just. Hallelujah. You say, do I have anything I can give thanks for? I lost a loved one in COVID. I lost, I lost family. I heard one pastor say he was bearing his 120th person. 
I said, oh, my God, I'm praying for you, Pastor. But he was still grateful, still thankful, because we don't focus on these temporal things. Jobs are temporary. Are you listening to me? I don't care where you are. There's no such thing as job security. I don't care how much money you're making today, tomorrow. You could be in the food line. I saw a lady down there in Georgia. They was giving out turkeys and chicken. And she said, I was a CEO. I was in the C-suite. She said, last year this time. She said, this year I'm in the food line. She said, never thought it would happen to me that our Fortune 500 company would close. She said, not only do I have to get a box for me, I got to get a box for my daughter. I got to get a box for my auntie. And the man that was giving it out, he was so kind. He said, ma'am, don't worry because tomorrow you might be giving a box to me. That's how quick things are changing. Homeless don't look like homeless used to look. Homeless don't look like an old rag tag out on the streets. Homeless look like an educated person with five degrees. Homeless looks like a person that used to drive a, a Mercedes, used to drive a Cadillac. Come on now. Homeless don't look like homeless used to look. Panhandling. That's why whenever I stop and I see someone panhandling, I give them something because but by the grace of God, they go I. Are you listening to me? They're pastors who are in the food line. Because their churches have shattered. So there are five things. If I can lift your consciousness. That you can still give him thanks for. You can give him thanks. For the spirit of wisdom. And the spirit of revelation. You can give him thanks. That the eyes of your understanding. Would be enlightened. You can give him thanks. That you will know the hope of your calling. You can give him thanks for the riches of his inheritance that's in the saints and you can give him thanks for the immeasurable greatness of his mighty power Woo! I still got something to thank God for come on let's give him praise right now those of you that are sick in your body I pray for you now in the name of Jesus I pray for you now in the name of Jesus that you will be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I pray for those moms and dads who are homeschooling their children. And it's rough on you. And now you have to stay home to take care of your child. And educate your child and work from home. You've got a lot on you. But I'm praying for you. That your faith don't fail. I pray for those that have loved ones in hospitals and you can't go visit them I'm praying for those that are preparing to bury loved ones and the funeral service will only be a few I'm praying for those who have run out of unemployment you have run out of money you've run out of resources I'm praying for our young people who are watching this unfold in Washington, D.C., as our democracy crumbles. I pray for those who are teaching, our teachers, who are trying with all of your might to make sure that your children in your classroom are educated through a virtual or remote platform. They didn't pray, prepare you for that in school, did they? They didn't give you that as a pedagogy, did they? And now you are working through it. Praying for the superintendent of schools. Mine, Dr. Nikolai Viti. Praying that wisdom will always be your portion. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation and the knowledge of God and in Christ would be yours, sir. That Rachel Viti would speak to you in the words of the Holy Spirit in the night hours. I pray for you and for our team. For our superintendents, our assistant superintendents, I pray for you. For each of you who serve a role in our school board and school boards around the country. We're in a place we've never been before. We're writing policies to keep up with a pandemic. I pray for mayors and governors. I pray for you. I pray. I pray for Mr. Trump. I lift him up before you, God.
to some, he's a light of hope. To others, he's a force of darkness. Only you can fix this. To some, he's a bright light, but to others, he's a dark valley. Don't let this divide the church. Don't let this separate believers. Help us in this Thanksgiving week to stay thankful for all that you have done for us in the name of Jesus. We pray God for President-elect Joe Biden. We lift up Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. And we pray that this transition will not produce a civil war. Saints, we have something to give God praise for. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation. That the eyes of our understanding are being enlightened. We can pray and give thanks for the hope of our callings. And we can thank God for the riches of his inheritance in the saints. And we can praise God for the immeasurable greatness of his mighty power. Father, we thank you. We can thank God for Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. And if you don't know him, receive him now. Just simply say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my savior. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. And just like that, come on, repeat it. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my savior. And fill me with the Holy Ghost. And just like that, something miraculous something supernatural begins to happen in your heart in your mind and in your life father we thank you we give you praise for your word hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah glory to you. hallelujah have thine own way lord have thine own way. I heard this this morning. Thou art the potter. <laughs> and I am the clay. Oh, yes. So mold me and make me, oh God, after thy will while I am waiting yielded and still right there in your room right there in your home I want you to lift your hands and say Lord have your way in my life Lord now as we get ready to leave this place we thank you that even now you will have your way in our lives. Take over our being absolute sway. As we move this week cautiously, as we move this week in wisdom, we thank you that you will have your way in our lives. Let the blood of Jesus be traction to our tires. Let the angels of the Lord come before us and the great host of heaven come behind us. Have thine own way. Have thine own way, O oh God. Even God, as we prepare our Thanksgiving meals, have thine own way. Have thine own way, God, in our homes and in our families. Those that we will not be able to gather with this year, but wisdom says that we will obey and submit have thine own way our gatherings won't be as large but we thank you for zoom and we thank you for other ways that we can see our family members this year we sacrifice so that next year we can be together have thine own way keep us oh god in the hollow of your hands keep us as the apple of your eye 
Keep us in your gaze and in your grip. Have thine own way. Have thine own way among this great house. Have thine own way among the mothers, the ushers, the greeters, those that we cannot see, but have thine own way. Have thine own way, God, our partners across this great land. Have thine own way. Have thine own way in our children and in our grandchildren. Our loved ones are far off. Have thine own way. Wash us and make us clean, whiter than snow. Lord, have thine own way. We thank you that you will keep us until we meet again. We pray it now in Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the majesty of his glory with exceeding joy. To him, the only wise God, be all glory, power, majesty, dominion, now and forevermore. Don't forget, amen. We've got a lot to give him praise for. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord is with you. Have a great week and happy Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, give him praise. Right there in your house, in your virtual sanctuary. Help me sing it. Hallelujah. So let, let the, the church uh -huh. say amen. Come on. Oh, let the church, let the church say, say amen. amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church. So let the church say amen. Oh, hallelujah! So make this your response. Amen. Whenever the Lord says, Amen. Come on. In your body, amen. be healed, and in your mind, be saved. Amen. As you make your way Amen. around the Thanksgiving table, Amen. remember be safe. Amen. Remember be well. Amen. Oh, if you get broken, Amen. start feeling down. Amen. Just speak the word of God. Amen. Watch him turn it all around. Amen. Oh, God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Oh God, hallelujah. God has spoken. God has spoken. I heard it when he said it. So let the church, so let the church say amen. Hallelujah. Don't forget to give. You can give now. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Don't forget to give. Sow a seed if we've been a blessing to you. Sow a seed. PayPal.me. HGFG. God bless you. Or you can do cash app. That's HGFG Cathedral. God bless you. Amen. PayPal.me forward slash HG Cathedral. Praise God. Miracles are happening right now in front of us. Or you can drop it in the mail. Please. So let's see. Go to our website. www.gotellit.org And then hit that donate button. Be a blessing if we've been a blessing to you. God bless you, Cathedral. We love you and the peace of the Lord is with you.
as we get ready to move into day 81 of Pentecost in a pandemic, School of the Holy Spirit, taking you into the deeper places of God, the Holy Ghost. Listen, you need this. <laughs> yes, you do. Do you want it? Do you know you need it? Listen, there are streams of light that's just waiting for you to come inside. So join me Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern. Facebook Live, IG, Zoom. I'm everywhere. I just need you to come with me. I'll see you in the morning, 7 a.m. Don't miss it. Yeah.